Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise somewhere along the slopes of the Mount Baker volcano in Washington state on this gorgeous Sunday, August 20th, 2017, which I think means I would have been married to that uh, to that woman for 34 years today, but that's a whole nother rant that has nothing to do with today's weekly doomsday sermon. Well, maybe it does have something to do with them. Anyway, enough of that woman. Let's get back to today's doomsday sermon. I am thrilled to announce I have finally gotten my grubby paws on my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Derek Jensen's latest book which is about a year old now it took me a while but better late than never this is uh, Derek's new masterpiece the myth of human supremacy which I'm about halfway through this and I've got to say of all of Derek's books I put this this is as close as Derek has come to hitting his uh, magnus opus, which was, of course, Endgame. I have had, I think, two or three Sunday sermons from Endgame, but I personally think this is Derek's best piece of writing since that book more than 10 years ago, or those books more than 10 years ago, when anybody, if there is anybody out there wanting to understand everything that I have been trying to say on Humpty Dumpty Tribe in my own bumbling way is summed up right here in the myth of human supremacy and uh, absolutely required reading for anyone uh, in the process of pulling their heads out of their asses. So anyway, I'm going to read a few selections from this book to give you just a taste of it, a tiny taste, and urge you to uh, get out there and get this book and read the rest of it. So let's just dive into the introduction just to try to frame what uh, Derek is diving into in this book. <clears throat> Unquestioned beliefs are the real authorities of any culture. A central unquestioned belief of this culture is that humans are superior to and separate from everyone else. Human supremacism is part of the foundation of much of this culture's religion, science, economics, philosophy, art, epistemology, and so on. Human supremacism is killing the planet. Human supremacists, at this point, almost everyone in this culture, have shown time and again that the maintenance of their belief in their own superiority and the entitlement that springs from this belief are more important to them than the well-being or existence of everyone else. Indeed, They've shown that the maintenance of this self-perception and entitlement are more important than the continuation of life on the planet. And of course, since this book was written, we have had elected the poster child of human supremacy. And you see where that is getting us. Until... This supremacism is questioned and dismantled. The self-perceived entitlement that flows from this supremacism guarantees that every attempt to stop this culture from killing this planet will fail in great measure because these attempts will be informed and limited by this supremacism and thus will at best be ways to slightly mitigate harm with the primary point being to make certain to never in any way question or otherwise endanger 
the supremacism or entitlement. In short, people protect what's important to them, and human supremacists have shown time and again that their sense of superiority and the tangible benefits they receive because of their refusal to perceive others as anything other than inferiors or resources to be exploited is more important to them than not destroying the capacity of this planet to support life, including, ironically, their own. Especially because human supremacism is killing the planet, but also on its own terms, human supremacism is morally indefensible. It is also intellectually indefensible, neither of which seems to stop a lot of people from trying to defend it. And then uh, this argument gets a little more abstract, at which point see, he says, this is too abstract. Here is human supremacism. Right now, in Africa, humans are placing cyanide wastes from gold mines on salt licks and in ponds. This cyanide poisons all who come there, from elephants to lions to hyenas to the vultures who eat the dead. The humans do this in part to dump their mine waste, but mainly so they can sell the ivory from the murdered elephants. Uh, this goes on and on. Let's pick a few more examples. How about right now in China, humans keep bears in tiny cages, iron vests around the bear's abdomens to facilitate the extraction of bile from the bear's gallbladders. The bears are painfully milked daily. The vests also serve to keep the bears from killing themselves by punching themselves in the chest. Okay, right now humans are plowing under and poisoning prairies. Right now humans are clear-cutting forest. Right now humans are erecting mega dams. Right now because of dams, 25% of all rivers no longer reach the ocean, and most humans could not care less. I think that has been proven many times. <clears throat> he, Derek is kind of like me. He loves to do all of these, uh, uh, all of these various roundup stories. Let's just pick one. One CBS news headline. Saltwater fish extinction seen by 2048. Terrible news for the entire planet, right? Well, we all know what's really important. One of the researchers is quoted as saying, quote, if biodiversity continues to decline, <coughs> the marine environment will not be able to sustain our way of life. <coughs> Close quote. Back to Derek. Gosh, the real tragedy of the murder of the planet is that if the planet is dead, it will no longer be able to support our way of life. I hate this fucking culture. In the bottom line. Oh, shit. Uh, I cannot believe in my gas-sucking truck, but I'm not going to start the rant over. Uh, anyway, I, I have my favorite Derek Jensen quote of all times. Uh, back in my possession, my We Are So Fucked sign uh, has returned. I cannot believe... 
I do not have my favorite Derek Jensen quote of all times to illustrate, but I don't want to start the rant over. So I guess we will make the title of this sermon instead of, we are so fucked, I hate this fucking culture. Okay, let's dive in to the chapter Facing Reality. Let's face reality with Brother Derek. <clears throat> I am known for saying that civilization is killing the planet and that it needs to be stopped before it kills what or who is left. I don't say this because I hate hot showers or Beethoven's Ninth. I say this because I have long been capable of doing simple math. I can do subtraction. I know if there are six billion passenger pigeons and you subtract a billion and then another billion and then you keep subtracting them faster than they can add to their own populations and faster than they can feed all those others in their biotic communities who eat passenger pigeons, then eventually there will be none. I know if there are uncountable salmon, and you reduce the numbers to where you can count them, and then you keep subtracting, eventually there will be none. I know if you estimate the weight of all the fish in the oceans in 1870, and you call that 100%, and then you keep subtracting fish until by 2010 you get it down to 10%, then there is something deeply wrong with what you are doing. I know the same is true for native forest reduced from 100% to 2%, native grasslands and wetlands reduce the same. And I want to bring down this civilization because I know how to add. I know that if you take a number, say 315, as in parts per million, and keep adding to it, eventually you will get to 350, and if you keep adding to that, you'll get to 400, and if you keep adding to that, you will get to hell. I don't understand why so many of us don't seem to know how to subtract or to add. Oh sure, I understand that people come up with lots of rationalizations for avoiding the simple math, and they come up with lots of fancy names and algorithms to attempt to convince themselves that 100 minus 90 does not equal 10, or that 315 plus 85 does not equal 400, or some that somehow pot showers, Beethoven's Ninth, and high-speed internet access for some of us all add up to more than life on Earth. But whether you call it managing forests, generating hydroelectric power, developing natural resources, sustainable development, green energy, agriculture, running the whole earth, or any of a thousand other names, the subtraction and the addition continue. What makes the whole thing even more insane is that the economic system, this is the global industrial economic system, that economic system I'm always ranting about, <clears throat> the economic system requires constant addition, and this addition requires and creates subtraction, by which I mean capitalism, and before it, civilization requires that production grows, add two or three percent each year, and production 
is a measure of the subtraction, that is, of the conversion of the living into the dead. Forest into two by fours, schools of fish into fish sticks or sushi or fertilizer. The math is both simple and tragic. I think that for some people, especially those in power, the only math that matters is constant addition into their bank accounts. But I think that so many of the rest of us do what we can to avoid this math, doing this math for ourselves, because if we do the subtraction, do the addition, our own personal sum will be unbearable sorrow, terror, and a feeling of being entirely out of control. I think many of us do what we can to avoid this math because we know that if we do the subtraction, do the addition, our psyches and our consciences and our lives will forever be changed. And we know that no matter how fierce the momentum that leads to this subtraction and addition, no matter our fears that we may be crushed or perhaps more fearsome, ridiculed, that we will be led in some way to oppose the subtraction of life and the addition of toxins to this planet that is our only home. Uh, I, I was going to do his kind of overdone analogy about driving a car down a tunnel at 100 miles per hour directly at a brick wall, but I think uh, I, I, I think we understand that analogy, so I'm going to move ahead. Uh, but things are far worse than just the authoritarian techniques running this culture. It should also be clear by now that members of this culture, for the most part, cannot even conceptualize living without the benefits they gain from these authoritarian techniques, and they have what amounts to no real concern for the victims of the techniques, the communities destroyed so they can have their luxuries without which life would be eventually unimaginable. I don't think most people in this culture particularly care if the oceans die, except insofar as it affects their participation in these authoritarian techniques, e.g. what does it mean for the economy and my role in it, and most especially, where will I get my fucking sushi? But things are still worse. Even the staunchest supporters of this way of life acknowledge, usually without realizing they're doing so, that this culture has based itself on overshoot and conquest. We could all become the purest of green pacifists and the system itself still functionally requires overshoot and conquest. And this basis in overshoot and conquest, along with its associated virtues of growth and development of natural resources and technological escalation, far from being attributes we are collectively even remotely considering abandoning are instead seen as positive goods. We're ruining, oops, running the whole earth, remember? But it's still worse even than this because our human supremacist, supremacism has long since moved from being an assumption or a 
or an attitude or even an unquestioned belief to being our very identity. This is bad news indeed. And then uh, we're going to dive into his chapter, the sociopocene or the sociopocene. Members of this culture are so narcissistic that they're now calling this era the Anthropocene, the age of man. The term was devised by someone who meant it pejoratively that, that humans have become so destructive of the planet that they could be considered a geologic force. But it didn't take long for human supremacists to turn the term into the sort of self-congratulatory rationalization for further destruction to which we have become so accustomed. <clears throat> yes, uh, I, fi I find the term really harmful for a number of reasons, primarily that the term Anthropocene not only does not help us stop this culture from killing the planet, it contributes directly to the problem it purports to address. We have had 6,000 years to recognize this pattern of genocide and ecocide committed by members of this culture because of this culture's narcissism, sociopathy, and entitlement, and the behavior is simply getting worse. And members of this culture have had 6,000 years to recognize that the cultures they're conquering have often been sustainable. And still, they come up with this name that attempts to include all of humanity in their own despicable behavior. What a surprise. Hmm. Ant the but the Anthropocene gives no hint to the horrors this culture is inflicting. The age of man? Oh, that's nice. We're number one, right? Instead, the name must be horrific. It must be accurate, and it must produce shock and shame and outrage commensurate with this culture's atrocities. It is killing the planet, after all. It must call us to differentiate ourselves from this culture to show that this label and this behavior do not belong to us. It must call us to show that we do not deserve it. It must call to us, it must call us to say and mean not one more indigenous culture driven from their land and not one more species driven extinct. It must call us to fury and revulsion. It must call us to use our lives and, if necessary, our deaths to stop this insane culture from killing all we hold dear, from killing this planet that is the source of all life, including our own. If we are going to name this age after this culture, we must be honest and call it the age of the sociopath, the sociopocene, and then we need to end this fucking age as quickly as possible using whatever means are necessary. And we're going to spend just a minute on imperialism. Anti-imperialist anti-imperialist discourse provides a great example of our lack of serious questioning, meaning seriously questioning our culture and our, you know, our imperialist tendencies. Of course, anti-imperialists rail against imperialism. That's what anti-imperialists do. 
but so many of them don't seem to understand that you cannot have the benefits of imperialism without having the imperialism itself. So they will argue against imperialism at the same time they argue in favor of, for example, high-speed rail or groovy solar panels. But you cannot have high-speed rail and groovy solar panels without mining and transportation and energy infrastructure, and you can't have those infrastructures without the military and police to control them. And in terms of the planet, you cannot have any of those infrastructures without the harm those infrastructures and their related activities cause. And since almost none of the anti-imperialist will question those basic infrastructures, that means most of them are not, in all truth, questioning the imperialism. I could go off on my own rant, but this is Derek Jensen's sermon, not mine. There's an even bigger problem than all of these, though which is that this culture is systematically and functionally killing the planet. All the wonderful and necessary work of every activist who is fighting as hard as she or he can to protect this or that wild place won't mean a fucking thing so long as this culture stands and all this fine work that goes into creating decision trees as to whom we deem worthy of saving and whom we will drive extinct is meaningless when we completely fail to address the cause of the murders in the first place. Until civilization collapses, the murder of the planet will not stop. The truth is that those other beings would not need to be saved if civilization wasn't killing them. The truth is that they can't be saved so long as civilization is killing the planet, and the truth is that in this culture there are certain topics which must never be discussed. Certain self-perceptions and perceived entitlements which are never negotiable. We would rather kiss ourselves and the entire planet goodbye than to look honestly at what we have done, what we are doing, and what we will so long as we have this supremacist mindset continue to do. And we're going to wrap up today's sermon with the last paragraph from the sociopocene <clears throat> boiling it all down from a human supremacism perspective it doesn't really matter that the managers the you know the humans saving the planet from from humans from a human supremacism perspective it doesn't really matter that the managers destroy everything they touch because even when the human supremacists have the evidence that their actions are harmful, they ignore this evidence. This is something we've seen once or twice or maybe every moment of every day. The human supremacists seem to believe that their willful ignorance of these harmful consequences means that there are none. Or maybe they just don't give a shit. 
Do you think so? The the managers, the managers of planet Earth. Good God, up here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Derek is actually uh, unbelievably uh, speaking well of the U.S. Forest Service in uh, at least around uh, the very northwest corner of, of California. I hope that's true. Anyway, guys, I need to wrap up today's Sunday sermon and get back to my Bigfoot hunt. But uh, once again, amen, Brother Derek. Anybody understand? not understanding why Derek Jensen is, uh, is my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, uh, as soon as you finish reading Endgame by Derek Jensen, which might be one of the supreme Bibles of the apocalypse ever written in history, uh, get out there and get the sequel the myth of human supremacy. Bye, guys.